Hello, good day everyone. So welcome back to my channel. My channel discusses a lot of things. So if you are interested to get to know more updates or if you want to gain some knowledge regarding this subject, please consider subscribing to my channel. Please do share, like and subscribe to get more students and to get more updates regarding my channel. Okay, so for today's vlog is I'll be explaining to you another topic in the subject of Philippine Indigenous Community. So I'll be talking about our lesson 5 entitled the social injustices. Okay, so what is social injustice? No. We we sometimes feel that way, okay? But we will be focusing on the lives of our indigenous people. So let's talk about our lesson 5, but before I'll go deeper, I would like to say hi. Hi to all my subscribers, to all my viewers, to all my new viewers. I am Joe Bren, by the way, I am a psychology graduate now. At the same time, a licensed psychometrician. So if you want to get to know more about my channel, please do consider subscribing to my channel. Social Injustice. Okay, so another challenging aspect in the lives of indigenous people is the various forms of social injustice. And sometimes, even if we are not indigenous people, no, we sometimes feel the idea of social injustice. Because there are a lot of factors, no? Or there are a lot of things that we consider that we are, that we are not given equal opportunity. So when you talk about social injustice, we, we sometimes consider those people, uh, we sometimes consider them as the others. Yeah, they are, they are different from us. They are considered as minority group or the significantly less individuals or the marginalized group. So they are considered very low or very inferior com compared to the dominant group, compared to us, compared to other people. And that's why, because of their cultural, because of their cultural distinct, because their culture is different from us, we sometimes set them apart from the rest of the society. We sometimes do not consider them because of their culture, because their culture is distinct, meaning their culture is very unique from us. Okay, so in this lesson, we will tackle the simplest forms of social injustices. So we have... We have the the prejudice and the stereotyping okay we will talk about prejudice and stereotyping so sometimes we we also feel being discriminated we sometimes feel the idea of prejudice and we sometimes feel that we are compared to others or we are considered the same from others we are doing the stereotyping okay this behavior may be considered minor okay you might say it's it's just a very simple way of this is just a simple behavior or this is not a this is not a major problem but take note for the indigenous people or if you feel discriminated if you feel that you are considered different from the rest of the group it hurts you and it's very painful that you are not considered belong to a same group. Emotionally, psychologically, it affects us, not just the indigenous people. So what are your thoughts every time you see those bad jaw on the streets? You'll say, I don't like them. You'll say the arm of prejudice. So for me, yes, we are discriminating them or we are judging them based we are giving negative comments towards them based on their age, based on their culture, based on their ethnicity. And that is a form of prejudice. Okay? So sometimes it hurts us when somebody is discriminating us. Not just the indigenous people, but even if, if you don't belong to indigenous people, we sometimes feel that way. That we are not being accepted just because of our color just because of our race and just because of our culture because our culture is different from other culture so according to richard skyfer he defined prejudice as negative attitudes thoughts and beliefs toward an entire category of people 
Meaning you are giving negative comments to other people. You are judging them. Giving them negative comment because of their age, in terms to their own culture. We dislike them. We, we dislike them because of their practices. So even if you have little or no contact with the group, even if you don't know them very well, we are giving negative comments toward them. We are giving negative comments towards them. And it's quite, it's very painful for them emotionally and psychologically for the indigenous people. So we should be considerate with, with their own feelings. Yes, there are some aspects that they are different, but in totality, we are all humans. We are all human beings. Right? We are living in the same planet. So we are just the same. Okay, so apparently, indigenous people have a distinct physical appearance. Yes, the way they look at themselves, the way they dress, the way they communicate. We can tell that IPs or the indigenous people have a distinct physical appearance. Something different from the dominant group. We are part of the dominant group. But for the, for the, for the Bajau, they are also preserving their own culture. That's why they are doing that. That's why they, they are different from the dominant group. The difference in appearance is often the cause of prejudice, not just among the indigenous people, but among the dominant group. Just because of our appearance, we are discriminating others. We are judging them. We are giving negative comments towards them. Even if we don't know them that much, we are giving negative comments. And when you talk about prejudice, it is not all about the indigenous people who are experiencing this kind of social injustice, but we are, we, we also experience that way, right? We also experience the, the, this type of social injustice that we are not accepted, we are discriminated because of our physical appearance. Okay, so... Prejudice is inevitable. So when you talk about inevitable, we cannot avoid prejudice. It is common and we are all affected by it. For example, if you go abroad, we also feel if, if you have your own Filipino race, you also feel discriminated you know, because of our culture as Filipinos. But now I think Filipinos are very competitive now. Filipinos are very proud of our culture. So... We are trying to embrace our own race. Okay, so pre prejudice is inevitable. Yes, wherever, you, wherever we go, people will, will tell us some negative comments about us. Okay, so it is inevitable, especially among young children. So why is it inevitable? Meaning we cannot avoid or we, we cannot prevent uh, the feeling of being discriminated because... There's still a lot of people who who do not understand the idea of the idea of accepting others based on their own culture because they don't really know how to appreciate the differences of our culture that's why they are practicing prejudice so if they don't like your culture they, they are discriminating you if you are practicing your own culture they will give you negative comments about your culture but, but that's how we are different from others. I have my own culture. You also have your own culture. And that makes us different. That makes the world go round, right? For me, I, I love embracing other culture. I love to go abroad. I love to go anywhere. For us, for me to be, to be mindful with the, with the culture of others, for me to be equipped with them, for me to have a short glimpse about them. That's why I don't, discriminate them i don't make negative comments about them because i don't know them that much okay so however take note that your parents behavior is also significant to the prejudicial attitude of children towards others meaning as parents it is our obligation it is your obligation to to instill to your children our cultural differences it is your obligation to, to teach your students how to respect or how to respect each other's culture. Not to discriminate or not to give negative comments towards others. It is our obligation. Okay? 
So in many cases, adults also show some prejudicial attitudes towards indigenous people. So even if adult, not just the young children, even if adult, we show prejudicial attitudes towards indigenous people. How do we do that? Number one is by staring at them, by looking at them, and by avoiding them. We try to avoid them and by asking them stupid questions and even using them to scare their children who do not listen to them. Meaning we have our own attitudes towards them. We don't go near them because we are afraid of them. We stare at them from head to foot. And that is a form of prejudicial attitudes. And so we need to be careful you know, when, when staring with other people because possibly when you stare at them, there is a negative comment that you are telling them. There is a negative attitude that you are trying to convey with them. That's why we need to be careful in dealing with indigenous people. The judicial attitude is closely related to stereotyping. So what is stereotyping? Stereotyping is you are making general judgment. Even if you don't know that person that much, you are making general judgment with, with everyone. Okay, you, you are telling them that you are just the same with others, even if you don't know that person. And sometimes you're also practicing stereotyping. Even if you are doing good things, just because you are blending with others who are doing, people will also tell you that you are doing bad things. So I think it is a perfect example of stereotyping. Stereotyping means making a general judgment to individual or groups of individuals based on their age, gender, and ethnicity. Meaning we are making a general judgment. So even if you don't know that person that much, so don't know that group that much or that person that much, we are making general judgment, even if it is not true to all. Okay, that is stereotyping. We often generalize indigenous people as uneducated, poor and ignorant we are we are consider them or we are telling them that indigenous people are number one uneducated poor and ignorant and do you think it doesn't hurt them it is very hurtful it, it you gives you give them pain emotional pain and psychological pain because you don't know them but you are judging them they are you are doing stereotyping it is not true to all right people who do not know the indigenous people very well tend to have this kind of behavior so people who do not know indigenous people who are not immersed with the culture of indigenous people we often tell them that they are uneducated poor and ignorant and we have a negative perception towards them okay take note our judgment is may not be true to everyone and our judgment is based on our perspective. So for me, it would be better if you have your own judgment. If you are not sure about your judgment, if that is right or wrong, we, we better keep our mouth shut na lang, no? because so possibly you may also hurt the feelings of others. So on the side of indigenous people, they are being called with different names. They are labeled with various remarks. And sometimes when you are labeled with various remarks, no, it hurts you. It's very painful, especially if these indigenous people are hardworking and peace-loving. It is very hurtful that, that even if you are doing good things, just because you, are you belong to the indigenous people, you will, receive, you will still receive negative comments towards, towards them. And for me, we should always respect the feelings of, of our brothers and sisters in the indigenous people. They're also humans. They have their own feelings. They have their own emotions. And we are, we are just the same. If you are going to, to ask me, we are all the same. Despite our race, our culture, our age, our, the, the skin color. So there's no difference between us, between the indigenous people. So when they, when they are labeled with many uh, various remarks, when they are labeled with negative remarks, do you think they are happy with that? 
No, those experiences, they consider it as this degrading. It makes them feel significantly less. It makes them feel that they are not important in their society. So we need to take that negative perception towards them. We should be considerate with their own feelings, with their own judgment, and with their own culture. Okay, so although it is not undeniable that a lot of indigenous people, yes, a lot of indigenous people, they are they're asking for money. They are begging for money. Okay, so sometimes we question ourselves why they keep on begging for money. Okay, so, but in, in this discussion, we should be considerate. Let, let, let's, let's try to look at their situation from a bigger perspective. So let's try to look at them from a bigger perspective okay so we will try to embrace what is really happening towards them why they are doing that way why they are begging for money okay so take note that the street is not their natural habitat yes the street is not their natural habitat they are just victims of displacement meaning our indigenous people are victims of displacement they are just transferred from their natural habitat to to our society to our to our place that's why they are they are not used to it right so they are just victims of displacement discrimination and disposition that's why they are begging for money they are living on the street because they are displaced individuals so they also have the need to survive to the changes they also have the need to adapt to the changes to survive. They also need to adapt to our society. And since they are not used to, to it, since they are not used to live here, that's why the only thing, maybe, the only thing that they can do is to try to beg for money to survive. Okay, so do you think, do you think some of the indigenous people have the same peace and comfort you have right now? For me, if you're going to ask me, no, indigenous people, they are, re they are still struggling. They are struggling. They are struggling to adapt to the, changes, to the changes of our environment because they are used to live in their natural habitat. But since, of the, since they are the big victims of displacement, discrimination, and disposition, they, they transferred to our society. So according to Skyfer, Discrimination is a denial of opportunities and equal rights to individuals and groups. So take note, our indigenous people, they are the, just the victims of displacement, discrimination, and disposition. And majority of our indigenous people experience discrimination. When discrimination is the denial of opportunities and equal rights to individuals and groups. They are not given opportunities. They are not given a chance to, to adjust to our environment. So in the case of Philippine indigenous people, they are discriminated against because they are considered inferior. They are discriminated against because they are considered significantly less. Right? They are considered inferior, inferior because their life is associated with their own traditions. Their lives is associated with ignorance and superstition. So they, they are living their own culture. They are living their own traditions. That's why if they transferred here in, to our environment, they are also struggling to adapt to the changes in the environment. So try to think, try to think about this statement. Have you experienced being displaced and you don't know where to go? So that is the same feeling with our indigenous people. So when they are dis displaced because of natural calamities, landslide, typhoon, earthquake, etc. This is not a form of social injustice because they are being displaced to protect them, to save them from any disaster. It became a social injustice when people were displaced as a result of discrimination. When you are, when you are transferred to another country just because of discrimination, and that is a perfect form of social injustice. Displacement has long been a struggle among indigenous people as they experience a lot of suffering 
a lot of economic and political marginalization. So you you can also see their lives on TV, no? In some documentary uh, news, you can you can watch so that you will be able to embrace their lives, the, their own simple lives. So as clearly stated in IPRA, the IPs, so the IP should not be relocated without a free prior and informed consent. So take note, there is a law that is given for indigenous people to help them, to help them, to give them some guide on how to, on how to adapt to the changes in the environment. So according to this law, so indigenous people should not be relocated without a free prior and informed consent. They should be informed, not just telling them to get out. They should be informed prior to the displacement. So if any given circumstance, they will be relocated due to natural conflict. Such relocation is just temporary. Temporary meaning after the natural conflict, they need to go back, go back to their natural habitat. So, once everything is settled, once once the natural conflict is okay, so they are they have the right they have the right to return to their own natural habitat. So that is the agreement, that is the law that is given to protect the indigenous people. Okay, so moreover, this law also provides some guidelines that if ever the indigenous people shall be relocated the relocation sh site should be should be in good condition should have adequate shelter food and other essential services as well as the chance to have their own livelihood opportunities okay so the law protects the indigenous people it is a guideline to ensure that the indigenous people despite that they are being dis displaced they still have a good life they still have a good security and well-being so that is the lives of our indigenous people that's how they experience social injustice and sometimes when we give a lot of negative comments towards them not sometimes i think it's logically it gives pain it gives them pain so since they are struggling to adapt to the changes in our in the environment as part of the dominant group we should be careful dealing with them we should be mindful with their own culture traditions history we should not do stereotyping because not everyone is practicing that way even if they belong to indigenous people i am so happy that there are a lot of banjao who are now studying because the government is helping them like the the four p's that they need to send their, their their children to school and that is a good program and i am happy to 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 tell you that there are bajaos who are now improving their lives who are now trying to to be to adapt to the changes in the environment despite their condition they are trying to be part of the dominant group while preserving their own culture, traditions, and history. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you get something out of this very quick discussion. Thank you so much. So if you like this video, please do like, share, and subscribe. And also, I also have turned on the super thanks button. So if you like to, to support my channel, you can also click that one. And no pressure it is just an app in the youtube that i need to to turn it on so this is just a very simple discussion i am i am happy that you are learning from all the videos that i posted so i hope to get to you soon and i hope you learn a lot throughout my discussion thank you so much and god bless